Jill, thank you so much. Friends and family of a missing 25 year old Pulaski County mother gathered tonight for a candlelight vigil. Leanna Brumley has been missing since May 22nd. LEX 18's Eleanor Buckley was there as her loved ones tried to hold out hope that they will find answers. She walked into the room, she'd brighten it up. Um, she was always like a class clown. She always had to make everybody laugh. But that laughter left Leanna Brumley's friends and family's lives on May 22nd. She hasn't been seen or heard from since, which her friend Secret Dalton says is unlike her. She's never been a runner. She's like a firm believer in facing her problems and being held accountable for them. So. Which is what her friend Secret Dalton says she was trying desperately to do when she went missing. The 25 year old mother had struggled with drug addiction, but she had a young son she was trying to turn her life around for. And it's for her little boy that Leanna's friends and family keep gathering on days like tonight to spread the message so one day they may get the answers they deserve. He's going to grow up not knowing how good of a mother he had that loved him more than anything, you know? So hopefully we find answers. Hopefully we find her. But they feel like they're running out of time. She's been gone for over three months now. And no arrests have been made, and her loved ones don't even know where to start looking. And so the only thing you can do is hope for the best, but prepare for the worst. And right now, I think, like, at this moment, I'm just prepared for the worst, which you're never really prepared for it, but you know the worst is the only answer you're going to get out of it. They don't have any more searches planned at this time, but are hoping by getting the word out, they can bring Leanna home. In Pulaski County, Eleanor Buckley, LEX 18 News. Today was the official start of football season in the bluegrass. The Cats took down the Toledo Rockets 28 to 20, sorry, 38 to 24. And before the game, Cats fans filled the tailgate lots bright and early. They kicked off the first Catterday of the season with lots of food, games, and the sounds of the marching band. After today's win, Wildcat fans hope for another thrilling season just like last year's. And many fans got to watch the season's first catwalk led by Maximo Shemwell, the brother of Marco Shemwell. Marco was hit and killed last year while walking from a home football game. This is video from Kentucky Sports Radio. Each catwalk this season will be led by special patients from UK Children's Hospital riding in the Lift Them Up cart designed by UK football player Luke Fortner and Toyota Motor Manufacturing of Kentucky. Luckily, the rain held off for the start of football season. Now, how will the rest of your Labor Day weekend shape up? Meteorologist Jill Sweat has the answer in your full forecast. She's up next.
certainly seems appropriate that we close out this month of August with yet another day with highs in the lower 90s in Lexington. In fact, we saw more days this month with highs in the 90s than not, including the hottest day of the year. That was back on the 19th when the temperature rose to 99 degrees. Meanwhile, this afternoon, 92 went in the books, but that was before some thunderstorms rolled through parts of the area. In fact, most of those storms were to the north of Lexington earlier this evening, but now things have settled down. We're sitting at 73 degrees on the Bluegrass Airport again after we saw that high of 92. Skies are mostly clear to partly cloudy tonight, and that's how they will stay going forward over the next couple of hours. But of course, on the Max Track Live Doppler, things were lit up with some severe thunderstorms that pushed through sections of Scott, also into Harrison, Bourbon, and Nicholas County. That brought some damaging winds. Reports of large hail, some of the hail the size of golf balls, also some torrential rain that did lead to some localized flooding concerns, but everything has fizzled out. You can see that cluster of thunderstorms that popped up really just sat rained really quickly and intensified as well. It gradually moved on into the evening hours with the loss of the daytime heating. Now things have settled down and that's how they'll stay, as I mentioned, through the rest of the night. So what we have going on right now, there's a stalled out boundary that was over us during the day today that added it looks extra lift to the atmosphere to get the storms going. But as it looks towards tomorrow, a war front is going to be moving through, so it's going to be a touch warmer, a little more muggier as well, and in the process with some sunshine, we'll spark off a few more isolated thunderstorms into your Sunday afternoon. That will gradually be fading away into the evening. Looking towards Labor Day, we're still going to have this weak boundary hanging around. Also high pressure in the neighborhood, so we still can't rule out an isolated storm for the final unofficial day of summer. But all in all, everything looks to be pretty typical summertime stuff for us over the next couple of days. Meanwhile, in the tropics, we are still watching what is a powerhouse hurricane. This is Dorian, which still sits as a Category 4 hurricane with maximum sustained winds of 150 miles per hour in case you were wondering to be a category five sustained winds at the top 156 miles per hour. So very close either way. It is a very potent storm that's going to be barreling through the northern Bahamas tomorrow as a major hurricane. Then it's going to set its eyes on the eastern coast of Florida. The track has been shifting a little bit towards the east over the past 24 to 36 hours. Still, the latest track from the National Hurricane Center takes the center of the storm just off the eastern coast of Florida, but still the outer bands could be impacting the Florida coast, also through Georgia and South Carolina, even as we continue through the middle of next week, eventually impacting North Carolina. And again, those outer bands still are going to lash the eastern coast of Florida, bringing the potential for tropical storm force winds which will lead to some rough surf. Also, will be inundating some storm surge concerns. And in terms of rainfall, over two feet of rain is possible as the storm moves through the Bahamas and eventually up the eastern coast of Florida. You can see some areas topping 16, even 18 inches of rain before the middle of next week arrives as Dorian continues to move on through. But back here at home, we're keeping it muggy tonight under partly cloudy skies, low 66. Some patchy fog will be around to get your Sunday started. Then into the afternoon, much like today, a mix of sun and clouds will lead to some isolated storms into the afternoon. Another very warm day, 88 for a high. We'll keep those high temperatures in the neighborhood of 90 Monday, also Tuesday. Eventually, the pattern change will come with the cold front on Wednesday, along with some isolated storms. Then we're cooler and drier, less humid as well. That's going to be the story through next weekend. We'll have more LEX 18 news after this.
A Lexington man who was in an officer involved shooting pleaded guilty to unlawfully having a gun. That shooting happened back in July. State police say an officer was checking on a burglary call on Patchen Drive when he tried to pull over Marcellus Means. Means then ran from his car and tried to throw away a gun but shot himself in the process. He wasn't seriously hurt. Means is scheduled to be sentenced in December. He faces up to 10 years in prison and is already a convicted felon. Laurel County deputies arrested two men and a teen girl after a foot chase. This happened on the railroad tracks off Chan McClure Road after 3.30 this afternoon. Deputies tried to stop a Jeep that was traveling northbound on Highway 490 and weaved over the center line. We're told the Jeep didn't stop and went onto the railroad tracks. That's when deputies say David Hutton, Jacob Hurley, and a 16-year-old girl hopped out of the Jeep and took off. They were arrested and are facing multiple charges. For the last two years, Deviate Kitchen in Lexington has been serving up what management calls life-changing food. The restaurant hires workers who are in the early stages of recovery from drug addiction. This morning, Deviate held a fundraiser at Keeneland to help further that mission. Hundreds came together in support of the business by taking part in the DV8K. The founders say the huge turnout shows just how far the restaurant has come, and they hope to continue to reduce the stigma attached to addiction. We want to change the way people think about hiring someone in, in, in addiction and we want them to understand the difference between addiction and recovery. This morning's race brought in $55,000. The money will go towards buying a delivery truck for a future DV8 bakery and establishing another restaurant. Kentucky victorious over Toledo in game one of the season. Full highlights and extended reaction coming up after the break. Top is filled with sadness and big blue fans smiling in the Commonwealth. That is what you call a successful opening day for big blue fans as UK began their season with Toledo out of the Mac, a noon kick. Let's get straight to the highlights. We knew Kentucky's inexperienced secondary would be tested early. Here's Mitchell Gagliani to Danzel McKinney Lewis, a 39 yard strike. Four plays later, it's the former Wildcat, Bryant Kobach, against his old team. Put the Rockets up 7-0. A terrible start defensively, but Kentucky responds right away. Chris Rodriguez, 21-yard run. Part of a 97-yard drive longer than any of the Cats had all of last season. Then Rodriguez 
at the goal line, fumbles it. You can't do that. Fortunately, Justin Rigg is there, and that's his first career touchdown. After a Toledo TD run, the Wildcats respond. A.J. Rose stumbles in 11 yards. All three running backs make it to big plays today. Cats and Rockets tied at 14 at the break. Second half action. At this time last year, Josh Pascal had just found out he had cancer. Now he's back on the field. A sack and a fumble. Forced fumble today. But what a story he is. We had a football game, though. Third quarter, still a ball game, just a seven-point game. It's Bryce Oliver, the star of the spring game, grabs his first career touchdown. UK still only up seven. Cavassier smoke. Smoke him if you got him. The freshman ices it. Just about every time we've seen Smoke touch the ball, he's made a big play. A 40-yard run here. Here's a look at the stats. Terry Wilson, super effective. The running game led by Rose and Smoke didn't disappoint. That will be a stellar unit this year behind a great O-line. No touchdowns for Lynn Bowden, but his presence was felt. Cats win, Cats cover, but the guys know there's still a lot of work that needs to be done. You know, we just got a higher expectation for ourselves. You know, we, we beat them. You know, Toledo a good team. They came out and played the best game against us. So, you know, uh, 